So welcome again. This is our last uh, seminar, seminar of the year. So today we have the pleasure to have uh, Giada Grossi uh, from Paris 13, uh, who is going to speak about uh, elliptic, elliptic curves in Piadic Towers, an introduction to Iwasawa theory. Thank you. OK. So thank you very much for the introduction and also the opportunity to speak at this seminar. Um, as some of you know, I'm, I mean, I'm a number theorist, so um, I will try to be gentle and introduce the objects I work with um, very slowly. Um, I mean, if, if at any point I'm going too fast or too slow, just let me know. I'm flexible on what I can say. Um, yeah, I think the seminar is supposed to be maybe 55 minutes, but I mean, if you interrupt me and I cannot finish everything, it's, it's completely fine. I just want to try to explain something to you. Let's see if we can get somewhere. OK, so maybe I'll start with um, an introduction. And maybe the main conjecture that we are motivated uh, to, to work on and we want to speak about today is about, uh, I mean, it's the virtual window diagonal conjecture for elliptic curves. So I'm going to consider an elliptic curve defined over the rationals. So just to remind you, you can um, take this to be given by a fine equation of this form. So it's a cubic polynomial. Uh, OK, and you choose A and okay, let's say A, B are rational. And you choose them so that uh, this, this equation defines a smooth curve. And OK, so I mean, an elliptic curve really is uh, the compatified version of this. So you, you make the polynomial homogeneous. You find a genus one curve in the projective uh, plane. And if you look at the complex point of this elliptic curve, you're essentially obtaining uh, just a torus. So yeah, genus one uh, curve. OK. Maybe not great. Yes. OK. So what's what we're I mean, I wrote down the equation because actually, I mean, we're we I mean, in number theory, we don't look at the objects over the complex numbers. We are because I mean, it's just uh, as simple as 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 I as I wrote. Uh, but we really look interested in looking at the rational points of the elliptic curve which means looking at the rational solution of the equation that I wrote there. Uh, so you take uh, x and y satisfying that equation with x and y both in q. And we have the model veil theorem, which tells us that um, if you take the rational points of the elliptic curve, this gives you finitely generated a billion group. Well, maybe first of all, let me just add one thing. So if you look at your curve, maybe defined like this uh, in the plane, um, you have an additional law defined on, on, on such curve using the cubic equation. So if you have one point, let's say P and another point Q, what you can do is you can take the line. <laughs> I mean, I'm not very good at drawing, so that's why I don't do geometry also. <laughs> Let me try to fix this. Well, OK, imagine it as it was a line between two points on the curve. And so this is a cubic equation. If you have, I mean, you have the intersection of the line with the, with the cubic, you, and you, so you obtain a third point. And yet, so what you do is you take the symmetric of this point, sorry, maybe this I call it R, and you take the symmetric of this point with respect to the horizontal, I mean, the, the X um, axis, and you define this to be the sum of these two points. So this is the additional law that you define using the algebraic description of the elliptic curve. And what you can easily see is that if P and Q are rational points, so they are defined by rational coordinates, 
Then you're taking, I mean, the line that defines the line through P and Q also as a uh, rational coefficients. And so you're intersecting with a um, in the cubic, two solutions are rational, so the third one is also rational. So you have a starter or abelian group, and uh, it preserves, if you if you just look at it over the Q points of the elliptic curve, it, is, it preserves this, uh, this group. So the statement of the model Bayes theorem is that this group is finitely generated, which means that it's given by a free part, which is uh, given by a certain number of copies of Z, which we call the rank of the elliptic curve. And then you have the torsion points of the elliptic curve, and this is a finite group. Okay, so this is the algebraic side of the picture that uh, one looks at when you mm, when you want to formulate the Bird transmission dire conjecture. And now let's look at the analytic side of it. So the L function of the elliptic curve, which we denote like this, is defined, let's say more or less, because I'm not going to give a precise definition, but for almost every, I mean, you're going to take an Euler product, so a product over all uh, primes, given by the following polynomial. Let me write it and then more. So, okay, L is a prime, and AL is defined to be 1 minus L minus this. So, you have this equation which describes you, uh, this equation which gives you the elliptic curve. You can look at uh, the reduction of this equation modulo L, so modulo prime. And in this product, uh, I mean, you actually have these polynomials for primes of good reductions. So what does it mean? It means that when you take the reduction of this elliptic curve modulo L, it's still an elliptic curve, it's still smooth. And, and this AL, which appears in the, in the product for the L function, indeed uh, takes into account the number of points mod L on the reduction of the elliptic curve. So, if you okay, first of all, let me say that this product. Um, so, as uh, defined like this, converges for half. So, s the variable s is in C. <clears throat> okay, but then you have the modularity theorem, which was. L function is the L function of something automorphic. So it's the L function of a modular form of weight two. Okay, I mean, I'm not gonna... Do you see my screen? I don't... Yes, we see you. Yes, yes, sorry, sorry. I mean, I think it's a bit slow in updating it, but... So um, I don't want to define the L function of, of, of an automorphic form, but the point is that this object uh, on the right is something that we understand better. And so in particular, we know that uh, this L function has an analytic continuation on, on the whole complex plane. And then you also have a functional equation, which means you're relating the L function at S up to this, which is called root number, to the L function of E, 2 minus S, where this root number depends on the elliptic curve is any, it's just plus or minus one. So in some sense, this L function, okay, it's an analytic, it's an analytic object. You can um, understand it better if you look, it, look at it in terms of the modular form, but in terms of the elliptic curves, what's encoding is actually like a lot of local information. So the number of um, points on the elliptic curve modulo all the local places, all the primes. Whereas on here for the motor Bayes theorem, the notion of rank uh, is actually encoding some global information. So you're looking at the global solution, uh, solution of the equation over Q. 
And so the Birch and minerton dyer conjecture gives a link between uh, these two objects. So it predicts the following. It predicts that the order of vanishing of the ellipse of the L function at one is equal to the rank of the elliptic curve. So note that, I mean, by this functional equation, the center of this functional equation is at S equals one. And, and so in particular, this order is even or odd depending on the root number of the elliptic curve. Then, I mean, somehow the value at s equals to one is the interesting value for, for this L function. And the conjecture predicts that this, this analytic rank is equal to the algebraic rank, which tells you how big the modern value group is. Okay. And there's also a refinement. Refinement of this conjecture. Um, which tells you exactly, so you're looking at this, uh, val the value of the L function at one, and, and you look at the leading term in the Taylor expansion of this L function. So if we call this R, then you can look at the leading term of the Taylor function, so the R derivative of the L function at one, and then this needs to normalize, so you have a regulator, and a complex period attached to the elliptic curve. And on the other side, I mean, I'm not going to introduce all the objects. So here we have the Tamagawa factor of the curves, uh, which I don't want to talk about. It encodes the information of sort of bad primes, so the primes of bad reduction for the elliptic curve. Here you have the cardinality of the torsion group uh, of the rational points squared. And then here, the other thing that you have is uh, the tate shakarevich group. So this is the tate shakarevich group of the elliptic curve. And I mean, uh, also this, I'm not going to introduce, but um, it's like a very mysterious object that one introduces using um, Galois homology. And it's, uh, I mean, it's conjecture to be finite, uh, but we don't know this in general. So for example, I mean, already part of this refined conjecture is that this state Shafarevich group is finite, and then its order is the relative but via this formula to the L function. So, I mean, you can think of, of this formula as a link between the L function and the state Shafarevich group, everything else. I mean, we can just consider it, like think of it this way. And if you think of it this, this way, this is an, an analog, analog uh, of the class number formula. And again, since you're not number theorists, maybe this is not very helpful. Uh, but I mean, the class number formula, like for number field, gives you um, a relation between the zeta function of that number field with the class group, right? And I mean, you can think. Uh, of this uh, Tate-Shafarevich group as the class group, which, I mean, for number field, we know it's finite. I mean, for the, this more complicated object, it's not known in general, but uh, indeed you're giving a relation between something analytic and the class group of the elliptic curve. Okay, so this is uh, the statement. And maybe let me say that the biggest result that we have about this conjecture is given by a combination of works of, I mean, in the 90s of Grozaghe and the work of Kolibagin, uh, which prove the following. So if you take uh, essentially R to be zero one, they prove one implication. So if the analytic rank, so the order of balancing of this L function is equal to zero or one, then the rank of the elliptic curve is zero or one. And also the Tate-Shafarevich group of the elliptic curve is finite. So this is really uh, most of uh, what we know. 
uh, about the virtuous minimum value conjecture, it's really hard to get something, um, uh, I mean, in higher rank. Uh, but something that you can do is, for example, try to prove the converse implication or uh, try to get to um, prove in some, in some cases uh, this exact formula. And what I wanted to talk about today is um, is even the theory, which is a way of proving these type of results in rank zero and one. So a way of proving uh, cases of so the converse implication or uh, the refinement. Of the, of the conjecture is using Ivazava theory. So, here. And in general, piadic methods. So, I'm going to try to explain a little bit uh, what uh, this is about. And more precisely, uh, so we can formulate uh, the virtuous minimum value conjecture or its p part in some sense, which I may be uh, going to make more clear later. Um, in the following terms, following terms. So we fix a prime maybe odd, and of good reduction. So the elliptic curve um, reduced mod p, um, still smooth, and b as well. <clears throat> and what we can consider is uh, the Tate module of the elliptic curve, which is uh, just given by the inverse limit of the p to the n torsion of the elliptic curve. Uh, so he, here, really, you take the p to the n torsion defined over um, Q bar. And, and so you have an action of the absolute Galois group of Q on this object. And maybe in more geometric terms, you can think of this as the etal cohomology of the elliptic curve with coefficients in Zp. And I think there's a t twist by one. So maybe the piadic realization of a motive attached to the elliptic curve. OK, so this is uh, because what I'm going to do next is to introduce what, uh, what really Vasava theory is about. Um, I'm going to uh, digress a little bit and say consider a motive in general. And why, I mean, what are the predictions for, if, I mean, if you attach, you attach an L function to such motive, uh, what are the prediction in terms both of the, the piadic picture and the complex picture about periods and algebraicity? And, and in the case of the elliptic curve, the, I mean, the thing you can mm, keep in your mind is, is just this example. So you have the this state module and you're looking at the uh, piadic realization of the H1 of the elliptic curve. So, we we'll talk about L functions and periods now. And as I said, maybe let's take a motive, motive uh, over Q. Um, not really specifying what I mean by that, but you can think of it as a system of um, compatible um, realizations. So you can take the cohomology of any smooth variety uh, over Q. And there's a way to such object to attach an L function. So <clears throat> I'll, uh, I mean, let, let me write this decomposition. So you're going to have the Archimedean part, so the infinity part of this L function, and then the, the finite part um, of the L function. So this here is a product of gamma function. Let's say depending on the odd realization of the motive. 
So, I mean, you take the ocularization, you're going to have a, a decomposition, and depending on the weight and on the, the degrees that you have there, you're going to have a suitable prototype gamma function. And, and this, uh, this part here, that was what I denoted as LF, instead is going to look at the elladic realization for every L. So in the formula that I wrote before, here I only had the finite part, but I mean, really the L function here has a gamma function, but so this, if you want, is the LF part. So you're going to take the elladic realization of the motif and take the characteristic polynomial of the essentially. Okay, so you, there's a way of doing this. And, and you expect, uh, I mean, analytic continuation and a functional equation. Uh, I think it's, I'm going to write it in this form. And and this, I mean, the term, this W plus one that appears here is going to depend on the weight of the motive. And you say that an integer is critical for M if neither this uh, comedian factor or the image under the functional equation of, of this have poles at S equals N. So this is the definition it was given by, by Lee. And let me quickly go back to, uh, if you take the motive attached to the H1 of the elliptic curve, then this gamma factor, the, yeah, I mean, this um, um, Archimedean factor is just given by, I mean, up to some power of pi, just given by the gamma function. And W is going to be equals to one because we said that the functional equation is with respect, I mean, it's S to minus S. And also this is going to be the weight of the motive. And, and so, I mean, you want gamma S and gamma two minus S both to not have poles uh, at uh, the integers you're considering. And we know that the poles uh, of the gamma function are uh, for negative integers. Uh, so, I mean, the question we're putting is S bigger than zero, so that this doesn't have poles. And for the, the other one not to have poles, you wanna, again, have two minus S greater than zero. Right? Yes. Uh, and so what you get is that the only critical value is S equals one, which indeed was the value that we were considering in the, in the Burton Swims and Dyer conjecture. But more generally, if you take instead of, I mean, in here, if instead of um, taking the L function of a modular form of weight two, you take a modular form of higher weight, you're gonna have more uh, critical values. Okay, so this was the example. And want to mention a conjecture by De Ling, which predicts that there exists, I mean, there exists two periods, complex number, such that essentially you want to have these critical values, so the value of the L function at critical points, to be algebraic for every critical. Uh, values critical point so such that for any n critical for m and not only these also for any directly character so you can consider if you have a directly character you can consider the motive twisted by such essentially such finite order character which i will denote by this you can evaluated the critical point and then you divide by the period and the conjecture is that this is algebraic so this is in q bar no q bar like this could be zero and where the sign is determined only by uh i think 
this. So depending on if the character is even or odd, and then you're also looking at if n is even or odd, um, then you, you pick the, the sign of the periods. And so <clears throat> the idea is that, I mean, up to this sign, um, you have only two periods, and for all critical values, this, this is an algebraic number. And, okay. Maybe but, the other, uh, for these motive, for these L functions, even we don't know the analytic continuation. No? I mean, a, a lot of things are conjectural before reaching to the Stellin's conjecture. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. So essentially, okay, I haven't uh, said much about this, but again, I mean, you can, I mean, you, you let's say you have a, an, I mean, a collection of um, system of realizations. You can define this L function again. A priori, it's gonna converge only on some um, on some portion of the complex plane. So maybe I should say conjecture. This has a functional equation. I, I mean, it, it it has analytic continuation. It has a functional equation, and so you can make sense of what's this. You can evaluate that, and then after that, we put this conjecture, which says that this is algebraic. Yes. It's all very conjecture. But again, we are going to focus on the case of elliptic curves where um, the modularity theorem tells us that this is, um, this is known. So the Piadic, um, the Piadic side of the story in, in this setting uh, is given by a conjecture of codes and RRU. Um, under some, this also is going to be very big, some conditions on M and P. So you're going to take a prime. And I mean, one of the conditions is like uh, the motive to be ordinary at P in some sense. Um, but I don't want to get into this definition. So, but under, under some sanction, you expect to have a piadic measure on ZP cross. So you take piadic in there and take the, <clears throat> the units in there. And the measure, maybe we call it LPM, such that when you wait such measure at some characters and um, critical points up to some factor depending on p you're really gonna have this critical uh, values so here i'm taking any n uh, critical and chi is gonna be of conductor a power of p. So I'm only taking twists by con mm, directly character of p power conductor. And my notation is that, so, I mean, I mean, this means that chi is a character of z mod p to the r cross into q bar cross. And the notation for this Uh, I mean, I'm gonna say that chi plus n, and even if I'm using the additive notation, this just means just a product of characters. So uh, I can evaluate chi at x in zp cross because I can see, I mean, I can take zp mod p to the r and, 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 and end up in here. And then I raise to the power n. So Okay, so I have a measure. I evaluate it on as a, I mean, on this function on ZP cross, and the claim is this measure is gonna give uh, up to this, which is gonna include the Euler factor at p, for example, is gonna give this um, these uh, critical values and twists. Okay, again, let's try to say, I mean. Yes, 
what happens for an elliptic curve. So this periodical function was defined by Maser and Swinerton Dyer. And I mean, in particular, we said the only critical value is that s equals one. And in particular, what you get is that if you take this and you evaluate it at one and chi the trivial character, then he, this is going to give you um, the value of, um, I mean, the value we are interested in in the Birch's Wind and Dyer conjecture. Again, there are some, I mean, there are some factors here I'm hiding, so that's why there's not an equality here, but it's sort of saying I'm looking at this periodic measure if you evaluate it. Yet, essentially, was what you're interested in. If you evaluate at one plus a p power order character twisted by this p power conductor character. And so let me write that the analytic side of Ivazava theory is precisely given, given by this periodical function. So looking at, let's say, the analytic side of the birth our twists. So you're, I mean, the bottom, the, the, the value at one, it gives you what you're interested in in BSD. But then if you, if you look at the whole measure, it's not going to only encode this, but also the value of all the twists. Okay. Mm, are there questions so far? And then I'll move on the algebraic side of the picture. But in the BSD, you didn't want to look at the derivative of the alpha? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if the... Um, for example, what you expect is that if... Uh, okay, of course, if the rank is, zero, is not greater than zero, this L value is going to be zero, right? And so this L function at one is going to be zero. But in general, when you have this um, periodical function, you expect them to be non-trivial. So essentially, I mean, in some cases, and in, in this case, for example, it's known, you expect that there exists a character, maybe, I mean, maybe not the trivial one, but if you go high enough, high enough, high enough for the conductor, you expect the twist to be non-trivial. But again, it's true, as uh, Roberto is pointing out, that the implication that we can get from Ivazava theory to the Bertus Winton Dyer conjecture, if we only work over uh, in this setting, you're going to get information only in rank zero. To get to rank one, then you're going to go over a quadratic imaginary field. Uh, but in general, um, yeah, I mean, you cannot obtain information about higher derivatives. I mean, there's, I don't think there's many known construction of periodical function encoding derivatives as information. They mostly encode L values and twist of values. I see, I see, I see. Thank you. Okay. Maybe let's try to say something about the algebra. Uh, The direct side of this the universal theory, but go to the Gaelic tower. <clears throat> and, and sorry, and, so, and you can say something yeah. about the Sha group with with the with this measure? With this uh, function? Yeah. Uh, I mean, once you get to um, to the Vesava main conjecture, yes, but. Um, Usually, I mean, the, not this, the periodical function, but the algebraic analog is going to encode information about the SHA. But usually, again, if it's an analytic rank zero, you know that the SHA is finite. 
maybe we want to prove something like a converse uh, if the sha is finite and uh, the algebraic rank is zero then the analytic rank is zero and so in that case you're taking as input the fact that the sha is finite but uh, i don't think uh, via these mm -hmm. methods you can prove uh, finiteness of sha but indeed about about this that's i mean what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna replace the um, i mean the notion of algebraic rank as i discussed before uh by something else which is also in gonna include the finiteness of the shop so we replace the rank by the p cell rank Okay, let's see if we can do this. So, if you if you look at the p torsion of the elliptic curve defined over q bar, as I said before, you have an action of the absolute Galois group of q bar over q, and you can take the union of the p to the n torsion for all n, and what you can look at is group cohomology like we call it Galois cohomology in this setting because you're looking at the action of this gala group acting on e p infinity and there's a way of defining what's called the p infinity selmer group of the elliptic curve uh, over q as a subgroup in here and yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> maybe I'm not gonna get into the definition, but essentially, what's your okay? So maybe if you have seen this before, you use the exact sequence. Uh, so you take p to the n torsion inside the q bar point of the elliptic curve, and then you take multiplication by p to the n, which is surjective. And then you take um, the long exit sequence given by, by this short exit sequence. So the H0 is going to just be the, I mean, the P to the N torsion or the point of the elliptic curves defined over Q. And then you get to the H1. So this is going to give some maps. And then you do that also uh, at, um, at non Archimedean places. So you, instead of taking, uh, Q, you take QP, or no, sorry, no, maybe, maybe, yeah, QL. And so this is going to cut out some local condition which uh, will define this Selmer group here. But again, maybe this is uh, too much to go into as a definition. But what you get is that, I mean, you define it in a way so that you get the short exit sequence as follows. So in the middle, you have this P infinity Selmer group. And then, I mean, on one side, you have the SHA, the P part of the SHA, which is a divisible group, this is known. And on the other, uh, on the other side, here, you have the torsion point, uh, sorry, the rational points of the elliptic curve, you're tensoring with QP mod ZP. Um, this is just because all of these are QP mod ZP modules. Like this is a QP ZP module. And, and so, I mean, the point is that, so maybe let's write, they're all QP ZP modules. And the rank as QP mod ZP module of the first bit is really the rank of the elliptic curve. So you're, you have the rational points, you have, you have your finitely generated abelian group. Tensoring with QP mod ZP, you're killing the torsion part. So here you're going to have um, exactly the number, the rank uh, copies of QP ZP. So that's what you have. And, and in particular, if the tate shafarevich group, or at least its P part, is finite, then this is also equal to the rank 
SQPZP module of the P Infinity Selmer group. Right? Like here, uh, you have something torsion. Uh, here, you have something, I mean, with the rank copy of QPZP. So the rank, I mean, the number of copies of QPZP that you have in here is precisely the same as in this one. So I, I want to do this because, um, I mean, you can reformulate BSD by saying, I mean, you fix a prime P and then you say uh, the chi is finite, the P part of the chi is finite and the analytic rank is equal to the, to the, the QPZP rank of this Selmer group. And this is somehow something that you can do for more general Piadic uh, global representations. And it's also what's going to allow us, allows us uh, to do the, I mean, to sort of do the correct definition in the Piadic tower. Okay, so maybe want analog in the P tower. I mean, what do I mean as P tower now? So I'm going to take inclusions of number fields like this. Where, I mean, so these are Galois extension and uh, the Galois group of Qn over Q is going to be isomorphic to Z mod P to the N cross. So you can, I mean, you, you can and you have to because that's the only choice. Uh, Qn is just Q to which you adjoin P to the N powers roots of unity. So, <clears throat> This is going to give you a ZP extension of uh, U, and it's the only one uh, that you have. And so the idea is that now, instead of looking at this Selmer group over Q, we are going to look at it over Q infinity. Because, I mean, and so the Gola group of this tower is ZP cross. And so, I mean, you have the ZP cross appearing here, the ZP cross appearing in the periodical function, and then these two objects are going to be related in the main conjecture of Ivasava theory that I'm going to state. So, you can consider some P infinity Selmer group uh, over, sorry, over Q infinity with an action of the other group of q infinity over q, which I call gamma, which is isomorphic to zp cross. And so this is going to be defined so that what happens? You have an exit sequence similar to the one I wrote before, but on the layers of this tower. So. So here you have the SHA over this QN. And in the middle, you have the P infinity Selmer group over EQ infinity, but, but fixed by gamma N, where gamma N is the equal group of Q infinity over QN. So you're, you have a module which has an action of this color group. You take the, the subgroup uh, of associated to this extension. And if you take the fixed part uh, by this, then you're sort of you're looking at essentially the rank of the elliptic curve over this layer of the tower and also the information about this, the, the Tesh Shafarevich group when you work over that tower. So essentially you're looking at the elliptic curve um, over QN. Okay, so let me state the Vasava main conjecture as uh, formulated by Maser. So the statement, so maybe let me write lambda as ZP double bracket ZP cross and the statement is that this module is 
lambda torsion. And so maybe in similar terms, this means that up uh, to a finite module um, is isomorphic to some uh, ideal, principal ideal of, of uh, lambda. And this also means, so this torsionness, um, if you, I mean, if one looks more into the definition of this uh, group and use this exact sequence, essentially it's telling you that the rank of the elliptic curve over these QNs stabilizes at some point. So uh, it can grow up to a certain n, and after that, the rank is going to be the same. So you're not going to get extra um, extra infinite order points going up the tower. So this is what roughly means. And also, so this is called the characteristic ideal of this Selmer group. And so this idea in lambda is generated by the measures winner from the periodical function that I wrote before. So they are both, I mean, the, the periodical function can be seen as an element in, uh, in this um, algebra. So you're evaluating from functions that we cross. And this, I tell you, I mean, there's a way if it's a torsion uh, lambda module to associate to it an ideal in lambda. And so the statement is an analog of VSD, but over the tower. So you have some algebraic object, and on the other side, you have some, some analytic object. And the claim, I mean, the conjecture is that um, they're equal up to periodic units. And I think I have a little bit of time to, to say uh, what are the applications to BSD. And essentially, exactly for what uh, Roberto said before, what we are seeing at some point is only the L value, not derivatives. So the early applications we are going to have are only uh, for um, rank zero situation. So, okay, so um, the picture is the following. What I said before is that we can replace um, the algebraic rank of the elliptic curve with the P infinity Selmer group over Q. And so you're gonna, I mean, the P, P, I mean, the P reformulation, the periodic reformulation of BSD is gonna give you a link between this algebraic side and the analytic side. Um, so the Vasava main conjecture that I stated above, again, gives you a relation between an algebraic object and an analytic object. So you have the periodical function here and the Selmer group over Q infinity here. But then the point is that, OK, you have essentially, you can think of this as, I mean, the bottom layer of this tower, and you have this um, which is the analog of this conjecture on the tower, but there is a way, once you know something about this, to, to go from one to the other. So here you have the interpolation property. So what's this? I mean, that's what I, I wrote before. So if you evaluate at one, this is gonna give you um, essentially so this is gonna okay, let me this is an uh, um something in zp so we can look at the order in p of this and this is going to be equal to the order in p of the l function i mean suitably normalized so that it's an algebraic is an element in q uh i mean the statement is that they are equal up to a periodic unit and that that's what it means. They are divisible by the same by the same power of p. And then, okay, so on this side, on the analytic side, we have this, and here uh, we have what's called a control theorem. And the control theorem is given by um, following statement. So, I mean, we decided we we called f of t. Um, ah, sorry, maybe here I didn't say well. Um, 
I mean, if if instead of ZP cross we had ZP, which sometimes you can do. Um, let me just do this for a moment. So this is isomorphic. You pick a, genera a topological generator of ZP, and this is just isomorphic to ZP double bracket T. So formal power series with coefficient in ZP. So that's the T variable that is appearing there. And so so we said that we call this formal power series the generator of this characteristical characteristic ideal of the Selma group in the main conjecture. And the current here tells you that if you evaluate this as one, at one, again, uh, this is a um, number, so you look at the ordering P of this. This, again, up to some factor is equal to the ordering P of the, the P part of the taste Shafarevich group. If the rank of the elliptic curve over Q is equal to zero. So in that situation, essentially we are saying this object, if, uh, I mean, if the rank in zero is zero, this object is only encoding information about the taste Shafarevich group. And actually, from the way it's constructed, you can check, you evaluate it one, and you really get up to maybe the Tamagawa factors and the other uh, and the other factors that you, uh, you expect to, to appear in the formula, uh, you, you get um, really the P part, the cardinality of the P part of the SHA. And so, so essentially, so the Vazava main conjecture, uh, of course, plus some work, uh, meaning that it's not all this straightforward. You have to figure out exactly what's happening. In some cases, this control theorem have, mm, has to be proved. Uh, but via this rough idea that this implies the P converse of the Birch's Winter layer conjecture, uh, or maybe of the girls again. Colivagin theorem uh, in rank zero, meaning you can prove that if the rank, the P infinity rank over Q uh, is zero, so in this case, then the L function at one doesn't vanish. So the, L, the analytic rank is also zero. Why? I mean, uh, I hope, uh, this is uh, clear. So, I mean, if you have the main conjecture, it means that this and this are equal up to a PIDQ unit, right? Like we said that they generate the same idea. So when you evaluate it one in particular, they are equal well, in ZP up to some unit. So this is equal to this. So this is the main conjecture. And then you use uh, these two relation that I explained. So in particular, if these two are equal, then this essentially is, is related to that. So this is going to be uh, not zero. And so this uh, is, uh, is going to be non-zero. And you see that by, by the same procedure, you not only get this, but you also get the P part of the refinement of BSD, the exact formula uh, in rank zero. Again, because you're relating the L value to the Tate Shafarevich group. So the sort of class number formula I was telling you about. And the other thing that maybe, I mean, it's called the P converse, because I mean, keep in mind, this is the assumption. So the ZP, QP ZP rank of the Selma group is uh, zero, but this is the same, where I put it. This is the same by this uh, exact sequence by saying that, I mean, no, sorry, it's not the same, but this is implied by the fact that the, the rank uh, is zero and this is finite. 
So the statement that you to have it, the p-converse of the Grozzegie equilibrium theorem I stated before, you have some. I mean, the statement of the four, uh, the chi is finite and the rank is uh, zero implies the analytic rank uh, is zero. So um, yeah. So here you're gonna put the p infinity here, but you wanna prove this implication. Okay, uh, yeah, so um, I think, I mean, my 55 minutes have passed, so I, I think I will stop here. Let me just add in uh, words that something else that one could do is in just working over Q, the way uh, that again, Koliva again got to uh, rank one is to base change elliptic curve over a quadratic imaginary field. By doing that, I, can, I mean, sort of control the rank and there's a way of producing, if the rank is at least one, of producing infinite order points, so something which generates the model value group, which is the uh, Diegener points, constructed on the modular curve. And, and you have some Ivazava theories also over this quadratic imaginary field. And over there, you have a sort of a general picture, and you can get to the, the link with the first derivative but which is not straightforward it's not like an interpolation problem anyways i mean the way to get to rank one is is via that so i'll stop here thank you, thank you